having an electronic touch point was something that really spoke to a lot of our sponsors, you know, and again, you know, I, I think I'm going back as far as like 2014 when QR codes started to become a little bit more well-known. Um, but it was still, you know, even members of my sales team were kind of looking at me like, really, you're talking about the QR code again. So, um, you know, I, we, we definitely believed in it early and um, it made a lot of sense to advertisers that were saying, I need more than just a static sign. How do I create activation? How do I change my messaging, make my messaging more dynamic throughout the course of the summer? And, you know, that way I can control it as opposed to I produced and installed that sign and I can't change it. So mm -hmm. the QR code also met that demand which was really helpful um, and, and remains uh, so to this day. You are listening to Power Marketing with Kevin Lee. Kevin and his agency Did It have helped thousands of businesses win through superior marketing, as have his books, articles, speaking engagements, and the eMarketing Association Power Marketing Podcasts. Here's Kevin. Hi, I'm Kevin Lee with the eMarketing Association. I also run a nonprofit, Giving Forward, uh, a brand, Truth Nutrition. And um, my main job is uh, Did It, which is running a, about a 45-person uh, digital-first marketing agency, but we've done traditional work as well. So I'm always super excited to chat with folks in uh, tangential areas to not just pure marketing, but stuff that overlaps with marketing. So I'm super excited to be chatting uh, with, with Michael Pfaff today. Um, he is the uh, president and chief business officer at Long Island Ducks Baseball. And the uh, main reason I wanted to sort of chat with you today, Michael, is uh, sports is like a huge passion area for sports enthusiasts. And marketers always love to figure out how to like tag onto that emotion that comes with sports. So, but I wanted to start off with, first of all, what, what's, the, what's the elevator pitch these days for sort of uh, the, the Long Island Ducks brand? You know, so so the Long Island Ducks, we're going into our 25th season uh, of professional baseball here, um, you know, playing at uh, Fairfield Properties Ballpark, which is located in Central Islip. It's a 6,002 seat ballpark. And what we offer marketers is a captive audience. So uh, for, you know, three to four hours at a time, there's really no channel flipping our audience, which is the largest in all of uh, MLB Partner League Baseball. Um, which is what our league is a part of, uh, is is sitting in front of your messaging. So, uh, you know, we we look at things like branding, awareness, activation, um, having ways to uh, put your messaging and relate it to kind of what fans are seeing. And there are a lot of different ways of doing that and being creative and having fun with it. But it is a different type of medium uh, for most of our advertisers who normally do television or, you know, social media boosts or things of that nature where, you know, they're actively involved with a brand that has a really positive association um, in the market. You know, uh, the Long Island region has is home to three million year-round residents and we are the only team that uh is playing in a venue that was made for it um the long island ducks this ballpark was built uh, in a public private partnership back in 2000 and opened in april of 2000 uh to serve the constituents of long island and uh the fans you know our, our promise is to provide the cleanest safest most fan-friendly and affordable way for people to spend their discretionary entertainment dollar and uh, as long as we fulfill that promise, people keep coming back, which is really what draws the marketers. Um, we, we have led the league in attendance 17 times. We have led all MLB partner leagues in attendance uh, in each of the past four seasons, which is as long as MLB partner leagues have existed. Uh, and that compromises uh, or comprises uh, is comprised of, I should say, uh, four different professional leagues that play professional baseball throughout uh, the the Northeast United States and Canada. So uh, over 40 teams, the Ducks finish first in attendance. So marketers want to know, are there going to be eyeballs in front of our advertising? Or are we going to be able to have a um, an, an audience that is paying attention to it, that can't flip the channel, a captive audience? And uh, do people have an affinity for the brand? And can we attach ourselves to it? So the answers to all those questions are yes. And we check the boxes here well with that. 
Cool, cool. Yeah, that that's uh, one of the amazing things about sports. And, you know, I'd love to hear how sports um, has changed sort of pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, if you have any thoughts on that. Um, it's still one of the few entertainment, you know, channels, I guess you'd call it, which which is primarily consumed live. But it also has archival content, and some people do watch Time Shifted, you know, uh, or go back and review a game or whatever. So I'd love to hear how that's sort of changed and how that's changed from the way you talk to the sponsors in that, you know, you've obviously got the real-time participation live, if potentially real-time participation streamed, and then you've got the sort of archival visibility of brands. And how, how do those all factor in? Yeah, well, you know, you, you touched on something that I think is super important in terms of delivering value. You know, we're always talking about uh, providing a high value, whether it is to our customers that buy tickets or to our sponsors that are advertisers here. And uh, the, one of the ways that we deliver such a high value is that repetitive, uh, you know, marketing that uh, you may have an outfield sign here at the ballpark, but then it shows up in so many other uh, mediums, whether it's, you know, social media, there, there was a great play um, that wound up being on a sports center top 10 last year, for example. And, uh, you know, that outfield billboard, we did not sell based on being on ESPN Sports Center 12 times that day, but it sure showed up and created a, a millions more impressions than we ever promised. Um, and of course, the social media, the viral aspect of some of those highlights that occur during the course of a game, and um, especially when there's something unique that happens, uh, you know, we don't sell the promise of that happening, but when it does, it's a fantastic over deliver. And, um, you know, that's something that, you know, we, we pride ourselves on is, you know, uh, filling our promise, but then, you know, uh, you know, over delivering when we can. Yeah, one of the things I've noticed over the years is um, obviously as uh, real time video editing has changed uh, some of the bigger um, sports organizations, you know, that are that are, you know, using the major networks or have started to sort of real time replace or create ad units that look like they're part of the field or look like they're on the field, but they're not, they're added in post or actually almost in real time, not even in post. And I, I wondered if, if at, at what size does that level of technology start to make sense? Is that something that's on your radar? Is that you already doing that for folks or is that sort of, oh, you have to get to a certain scale before that makes sense? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, you touched on one thing that that dovetails nicely into the, you know, what's changed since COVID. And that is one of the most recognizable things to the end user, um, you know, watching uh, one of the four, the major four leagues um, execute their sponsorships when you're when you're watching a broadcast, whether it's streaming or, or on, on TV, you know, they are, uh, you know, showing boards that don't exist at that hockey exactly. game. So um, <laughs> yeah. that, that's something that's very noticeable to the end user. And you do have to scale up before you get there. And right. the other major shift is that so much is based on content now and, and trying to fill that content um, that, you know, for example, our league has our first, um, you know, rights deal with a, uh, a streaming company, you know, we've been with Flow Sports since uh, 2023. So for the past two seasons, we've had a exclusive rights deal with Flow Sports. Um, and it's gone well. Um, it's It's been smooth. I think that the broadcast has been of higher quality. And there are more opportunities for advertisers. But uh, we haven't scaled to the point yet where we are showing uh, for example, our outfield advertisers on a visitor's outfield wall, which I think is one of the examples of what you see in the four majors. So, right. um, you know, I'm sure we'll get there, but uh, <laughs> not quite yet. Well, I think the price points for that kind of stuff are dropping pretty dramatically uh, as a result of AI powered videos. So it may happen sooner than you think, because the two lines will cross, right? The cost will drop and, and, um, the interest you, you'll get some interest from a, a sponsor potentially. Um, I'd love to talk a little bit more about the demographics of sports, right, and and how that's potentially changing, and how that factors into sort of the packages that you put together for sponsors, because it's one of those family led activities where you know it's everybody from grandpa to the kids potentially showing up, 
And uh, but beyond that, obviously, marketers are interested in you know who am I in front of, right? And so, uh, to what level do you have the data on that from the ticket holders versus the folks who are participating yeah, via the streams? Yeah, we, we're active in surveying our audience as well as, of course, zip code code demographics to know exactly where our ticket buying audience is coming from. And, you know, Long Island is is not that um, it's creatively named. We are a Long Island, <laughs> 120 miles long. And, um, you know, because we play in Central Islip, you know, all of these, it, it's an interesting place because on Long Island, there are like 200 plus school districts. And you know, each one of those school districts has its elementary school and its middle school and its high school and sometimes multiple of each and um, their own, you know, uh, temple and, and church and uh, Taekwondo studio and dance studio. And they're, they're, they're all these like little cities into them unto themselves. And sometimes people from Massapequa have never been to Central Islip in their life and it's 20 minutes away. So, um, you know, for, for us, you know, we really work hard and strive to uh, fulfill in being the Long Island Ducks. We're not the Islip Ducks or the Suffolk Ducks or the Nassau Ducks, we're the Long Island Ducks. So right. uh, outreach to all of those uh, areas uh, geographically is important. And uh, we've we've been successful uh, in our first 24 years in doing that. We know that our demographics reflect that. So, you know, we have a, a map that we can show where our ticket buyers are coming from. And, you know, the cutoff point to the west is the Nassau-Queens border, and the cutoff point to the east are the Twin Forks. Um, for those familiar with Long Island geography, you know, that that's Queens and the Hamptons, um, basically. So, you know, we, we know that we have a great penetration in the market, north, south, east, west, up to those points, and then it starts to drop off a little bit. But um, it shows that, that um, you know, we are drawing from those areas. And, and really, you know, we're not competing with the Mets or Yankees. We're, we're competing with the movie theaters. And, you know, we're, we're more affordable than most movie theaters at this point, $15 tickets and free parking. So when, you know, to your point about grandfathers down to young children, when a family is looking to, to go to a baseball game and, and you know, teach their, their grandchild the, the fun of being in a, in a beautiful outdoor venue and having a hot dog and a soda and running the bases after the game and watching a great baseball game or seeing the fireworks, it's a lot easier to bring four people out here for $60 and free parking than it is to invest in a major league facility fight the crowds, pay $50 for parking, pay $250 a ticket, and then invest in a hot dog. So, you know, for us, it we win on convenience and that's how we're drawing, you know, getting that messaging out and making sure that, you know, it, it, we're, we're repetitive in the market and fulfilling on our promises, creating, uh, you know, those repeat customers. So, you know, we do draw from everywhere on the island. Uh, our our demographic does skew slightly uh, older because we, we do draw the parents and the grandparents, um, but it, it is uh, largely kids that you see that are out here with their families. And, uh, you know, Mrs. Karn's fourth grade class has new fourth graders every year and they come out to sing the anthem and it's a beautiful thing. And, and um, you know, we have our, our school districts out here. Um, you know, every opportunity to get involved here in the game we offer, whether it's singing the anthem or being the color guard or being involved in promotions and uh, everything in between. So pre-event performances, you know, we've had marching bands from, you know, Mineola High School come out and, and uh, you know, dance troops from St. John's University and, you know, but everybody from elementary schools to colleges come out and participate out here and and bring their families. And it's one of the the ways that we've been able to uh, drive traffic from, from every zip code here on Long Island. Absolutely. Do some of the sponsors or potential sponsors have sort of misconceptions with regards to sort of wealth and income levels? Because obviously if they think like, oh, I'm a law firm, I should be doing golf outings, right? Because they sort of think golf is sort of a rich person sport, but they don't realize that, you know, baseball sort of cuts through all uh, income levels and wealth levels. And, and so they can they can reach those kinds of folks, you know, with you guys as well. Absolutely. I think Long Island is a unique market, too, in that uh, income levels on those traditional demographic scales skew a little higher anyway. So, right. um, you know, with with the higher income levels, we, we, we tend to check that box 
when people are looking at percentages of your your fan base that earn a hundred thousand or higher, you know, our number is very high. Our number, I think, is 74%. So, you know, it's a high number, but I think that that just speaks to the region that we're in. Um, you know, what they're paying for everything is higher too. So again, it separates us and, and makes us unique in that we're offering something affordable in a market where literally nothing is affordable. So, um, you know, that that is uh, definitely a question that we get and it is a demographic and information that we provide. Yeah, I'd love to talk a little bit about uh, social media because um, one thing that's uh, sort of a little bit unique to sports is you've sort of got the the social media presence of the team, but then you've also got the the social media presences of the individual players, which tend to be much more wild as far as either being, you know, large numbers of, of, of fans that are, um, followers of a particular person versus the, the the brand itself, and how how does that dynamic end up working? Do you, do you guys end up really coordinating with the individual players to try to unify messaging or unify use of clips or unify you know uh, some consistency and and make it sort of easy for the fans to jump back and forth between whatever it is, Insta, Facebook, TikTok, whatever their social media platform of choice is. Yeah, when when the opportunity pre presents itself, we definitely try to take advantage of that. Uh, but our product is a little different in that, you know, we are a uh, in terms of play on the field. We're here to win, and our players are here to showcase themselves and get better opportunities in the game of baseball. Um, we won the award this past year, the inaugural award for most players signed uh, in our league. So. Uh, you know, we're accomplishing that and and being faithful to that mission of providing a great showcase for players to get signed. Um, but our rosters tend to be very transient. So mm -hmm. there's not a set uh, way that we go about uh, putting together our, our player social media with our team. We tend to tag our players to get them involved, to, to make them feel welcome to share, um, you know, communicate with them. And they often do. And, and, you know, it's highly appropriate content because, you know, we've usually created it, but um, as far as consistency with players, that tends to be difficult because our players are seasonal. They're on one year contracts yeah. and often, um, you know, because of the transient nature of our, of our league and our rosters, they could be here. You know, I'll give you an example. Our, our, our closer, I think one of the clips that had the highest pickup this year was when uh, a pitcher that started the season as our closer got signed by the Tampa Bay Rays. And uh, in July, he was pitching at Yankee stadium against the Yankees. And um, the Yankees uh, on field reporter specifically mentioned the Ducks and how um, his name was Tyler Zuber, the pitcher. How Tyler had kind of reignited his passion for the game, pitching for the Long Island Ducks and really kind of found himself again. Um, and that that video clip we shared, uh, it was posted on uh, the broadcasts, uh, social pages. Uh, it was picked up everywhere. It was shared uh, everywhere, and and really got got great uh, had great legs. Um, but that wasn't due to you know anything other than us being faithful to our promise of providing the best showcase. So you know if we hadn't done that, you know the results wouldn't have been there. So we really try to focus on our knitting and making sure that you know we're delivering on our promises, which to the fans again are cleanest, safest, fan friendly, affordable to the players best showcase, best place to try to be competitive and win. Because remember, you know, with, with affiliated clubs, their minor league teams, they're there to develop talent for the big league club. Right here, the ducks are here to win. So, you know, it's, it's different. And, mm. um, you know, I think that we've seen the best results when we just remain, you know, true to mission and, and, let the natural, you know, course, uh, you know, of action take itself to, you know, where it ultimately leads, which is great social media sharing, genuine uh, appreciation, uh, genuine care and excitement. I, it just occurred to me when you talked about the transient nature of the, the players because of your mission that uh, it probably results in a pretty significant alumni network, right, of the folks who sort of graduated on uh, in their careers. 
And I'm curious if there have been sort of in interesting instances where sort of they maybe they they come back, you know, to visit or they, they continue to sort of be engaged in the brand uh, after the fact, because obviously you, you played an instrumental role in their career path. Uh, so I wonder if that manifests itself in interesting ways. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, we we have uh, currently we are uh, promoting because we're entering our 25th anniversary season and um, we are promoting a 25th anniversary all time team. And, you know, we're sharing that the players that are being named to that team, uh, you know, those players are, are players, one of whom uh, we named uh, either last week or the week before. But it was a starting pitcher for us named John Brownell. John was just here this past summer. He hadn't pitched for us since 2018. He pitched for us for a number of years, I think eight seasons. And, um, you know, he came back here with his with his family. Uh, it was great to see him. He threw out a first pitch, uh, you know, and then we, we uh, you know, named him to our all-time team just last week and, uh, you know, tagged his social media. And, and uh, you know, so, so yes, when it comes to that, but then we've also had times where on a much, you know, larger like MLB scale, I can remember when um, one of the better known signings from our league uh, came from our team, a left-handed starter named Rich Hill, who pitched for us, made a, made a couple of starts in 2015 and then was signed by the Red Sox uh, in 2015. And he went from our mound to Fenway Park within two months. Uh, and was pitching against the Yankees at Yankee Stadium. But the following season, he was pitching for the Dodgers in the playoffs. And, um, you know, I'll never forget, it was uh, game six, I believe, of the World Series. And um, Ken Rosenthal was interviewing him after the game. He had pitched a great game. The Dodgers won. And the first thing Ken Rosenthal said was, you know, a year ago, you were pitching on, on the mound for the Long Island Ducks in the Atlantic League. And now here you are, the winning pitcher in the World Series, you know, explain to me what that's like. And it's like, you know, that 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 kind of um, flip and, and, and take it's invaluable, you know, because sure. everybody in the game of baseball and, and even casual fans are watching that at that point and right. hearing the Long Island Ducks and understanding that we're part of you know, his journey. And, um, you know, he's, he's always, he's another person who, to your point, has been incredibly complimentary of his time here and, and the small role that we played in his success, you know, which we're appreciative of. So, um, yes, to answer your question, it happens on, uh, the alumni level, uh, whether they're still active or even retired players as well. Switching back to sort of sponsors and to the, the the fact that you give a unique you know venue to sponsors to get in front of their prospects and their customers, are there any industry categories that you got like really positive feedback from that sponsors that are sort of outside of what I or others might think like oh that's an obvious sponsor right because there are some obvious sponsors you know certain Long Island has its sort of regional brands. And, and some regional companies that you would expect to be sponsors. But I imagine that you occasionally get one that comes in that's sort of not an obvious one, but yet has a huge success. So I'd love to hear any of those uh, stories. Yeah, we, we've had a tremendous amount of, of success stories um, and, and great testimonials from our partners. And, you know, many of whom are um, people that you'd expect. But, you know, it's interesting, traditional marketers there are no gimmies. You know, you, you really do have to earn every partnership and, and we don't mind doing that. You know, we, we have the data to back up our, 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 our uh, execution. You know, we're, we're proven at this point in terms of the reach and the value that we can create and the effectiveness of the marketing here. Um, in terms of some unique promotions that we think have, uh, you know, borne out results, you know, there's, uh, there's one that comes to mind where uh, Long Island MacArthur Airport, uh, who it, that's kind of a different sponsor. You know, not everybody has an airport as a sponsor. <laughs> and, um, you know, this airport happens to be uh, very conveniently located for for Long Islanders that may or may not have a positive experience going to like JFK or LaGuardia. Uh, but Long Island MacArthur Airport is located uh, very close to the ballpark, about 10, 15 minutes and um, 
you know, we, we've had a weekly promotion with them where, um, you know, there's social media involved, there's promotional interaction at the game involved on every Saturday night where those are our highest attended games because they have fireworks and they've, they've had, um, a, uh, not just branding at the ballpark, but also something that we put in before they were ubiquitous, which is QR codes with our signage. <laughs> um, you know, QR codes maybe 10 years ago were something that 20% of the population used. And now that they're on everybody's, they're easy to scan and and, and, and get to links on, on your phone. Um, there's something that are much more prevalent. And we had been doing those for many years and um, it wasn't until you know, Long Island MacArthur came on board and, and really started to take advantage of that, that, um, you know, we, we had some really positive testimonials and some traction on, on that. So, um, you know, but, but we, we were early adopters in, in the, uh, the QR code uh, area and, and uh, it's definitely paid dividends. So, uh, so much so to the point now, uh, every billboard partner here at the Ducks, if you have an outfield sign, you have an opportunity to put a QR code in our highest foot traffic area of the ballpark as well, which is customer service. So, um, and, and that gives you the opportunity to have a message you control throughout the year. So it might be, you know, for PC Richard and Son, air conditioners during the summer, um, you know, right now they're, they're, you know, they just got done with Black Friday and Cyber Monday advertising. So, you know, it changes throughout the year, but it's something they control and and it's at a very highly trafficked foot. And, and that's added value that we put in. We didn't raise the price on, on the outfield signage or the premium signage. Uh, we just added this in. And as technology has improved, the value has increased. So um, it's been really effective. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned uh, the QR codes. You know, they had sort of uh, almost disappeared in the pandemic, brought them back because of the fact that you couldn't order food in a restaurant without getting to the menu through right. the QR code. So an entirely new demographic suddenly figured out how to use them around the same time that all the phones added them in as native. And uh, I, I met with our direct mail team and we digitized the system that now puts custom QR codes on every piece of mail unique to the individual so that when they scan it, uh, even if the person abandons the landing page, the marketing team knows this as a Glenn Gary lead, right? So it's it's really transformed direct mail uh, as well. So, you know, we, we put them on a lot of outdoor advertising that we uh, have for sponsors as well, because especially if the person's a captive audience, you know, at a bus shelter, at a train station. And like, if the message is interesting, they're like, okay, I got nothing to do. I might as well scan the QR code. It yeah. was an interesting message. So I think stadiums are similar that way, right? And that the, there is going to be a lull and that QR code, if it's a brand that the person has an interest in, they're going to engage. So it's a win for everybody. Absolutely. You know, we were trying to be responsive um, because we have a lot of signage in the ballpark. Have you been to a Ducks game yet, Kevin? I have not. Okay, you'll have to come out next next summer, please. Uh, but it, it is definitely a place where you know you'll see there's a lot of of branding opportunities and you know unique and not you know there there's outfield standard outfield billboards and then there are you know some more unique pieces um, based on experiences in the ballpark. But one of the common um, comments we were hearing was you know are there any ways to activate off the signage in the ballpark? And, you know, we would get very creative with experiences and different promotions we could do. But having an electronic touch point was something that really spoke to a lot of our sponsors, you know. And again, you know, I, I think I'm going back as far as like 2014 when QR codes started to become a little bit more well known. Um, but it was still, you know, even members of my sales team were kind of looking at me like, really, you're talking about the QR code again? So, um, you know, I, we we definitely believed in it early and um, it made a lot of sense to advertisers that were saying, I need more than just a static sign. How do I create activation? How do I change my messaging, make my messaging more dynamic throughout the course of the summer? And, you know, that way I can control it as opposed to, I produced and installed that sign and I can't change it. So the QR code also met that demand, which was really helpful um, and, and remains uh, so to this day. Great. Any uh, final thoughts on uh, what uh, 
potential sponsors or marketers should know, or even uh, ticket holders, uh, you know, or the potential ticket buyers should know about about the ducks. Well, you know, we we have absolutely no governor on the engine here, so um, you're only limited by your by our our and your creativity as a sponsor. So, uh, if the question is, can we do? And you want to fill in a blank? The answer is usually yes. So, um, you know, good taste is really the only. You know, we're not going to do anything that steps over the boundaries of of, of fan and family friendly and good taste. But um, you know, really, it, it it's a blank canvas. You know, we have standard inventory. We have you know a, a menu and a partnership guide and a deck, just like everybody else in every other venue. But the nice thing about the ducks is that in this venue, there's no limit to our creativity. And if there's a vision that you have, we can achieve it. Uh, we have an awful lot of breaks. You know, we we uh, it's not first period, second period, and then end of the game, or mm -hmm. you know, first quarter, halftime, end of the game. It's it's mid first and first, mid second and second, <laughs> mid third, and there is a lot of breaks. There's a lot of areas where we we fill time with promotions and messaging and awareness campaigns. So, um, you know, we have a unique ability to uh, really be uh, flexible enough to achieve almost any vision. And we love working with our sponsors to, to achieve really unique outcomes and um, do things that they really can't do in almost any other uh, medium. Great. Well, it's, uh, it's great final words. Thanks so much for sh sharing the uh, power of sports and ducks in particular uh, for marketing. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Kevin Lee's Power Marketing is available on all your favorite podcast networks. Kevin loves helping businesses excel at marketing. Having marketing challenges? Just like Santa in the Miracle on 34th Street, if Kevin can't help you, he'll know someone who can. Find him on LinkedIn, subscribe or follow.